Hello everyone, and welcome to your complete and ultimate Ayaka guide. Ayaka is one of the strongest 5 star DPSs in the game, and so in preparation for her rerun, this video is to hopefully guide any current or future Ayaka owners on how to roughly build her. This video will cover all of the following in order. General playstyle, talent overview, weapon options, artifact sets and stats, team comps, constellation overview, as well as an Abyss 12 showcase, all in an as condensed manner as possible. Chapters and timestamps are below. Just as a note, this guide is recorded on my free to play account, as I do not have Ayaka on my main. As a result, my Ayaka is not as strong as I would like to demonstrate, since my artifacts on this account are not as good as those on my main account. However, they should serve to be a bit more relatable to a majority of players. With all that out of the way, let's get right into the guide. Ayaka is a monster DPS who focuses on taking enemies out with her ridiculously damaging burst. Ayaka's burst dishes out some of the largest amount of damage multipliers within the shortest amount of time in the game. This means that she scales very highly with investment and is also one of the strongest overall DPSs against boss type enemies. In multi-target scenarios, Ayaka naturally relies on freeze a lot as is the nature of a cryo character. Due to this, she is often very reliant on her teammates, needing both an AoE Hydro Applicator, as well as Crowd Controller, like Kazaha or Venti, to ensure Ayaka's burst can hit as many enemies as possible. Her burst does not have very good auto-targeting, so it's always important to Crowd Control them as much as possible, since Ayaka does often have significant downtime, as well as the fact that she already has excellent synergy with both Venti and Kazuha anyways. Ayaka herself is very strong, but she is quite reliant on specific teammates, a lot of whom are 5 stars, to perform well. She usually needs an AoE Hydro Applicator, the two main ones being Mona and Kokomi, as well as the aforementioned Animal characters. As such, she isn't exactly the most free-to-play friendly character, but when built well, she will likely be one of the most valuable additions to any account. Firstly, before we get into Ayaka's attacks, we have to first cover her dash. When Ayaka sprints, she moves faster than average and disappears into the ground. When she reappears, she will apply cryo onto anything near her, as well as gain cryo infusion on her normal charged and plunge attacks for the next 5 seconds. We'll get into her infusion attacks in a bit, but there are a few things of note with this dash. When Ayaka enters her dash state, she does have a fairly big invincibility frame window. However, while in her dash, she does have very limited mobility, notably in her lateral movement, as well as having very long recovery frames when exiting her dash, which does make her susceptible to getting hit if timed poorly. Her dash is also very important as it not only can immediately freeze enemies due to its cryo application, but is also important due to one of her other passive talents, which we'll get into later. Now onto Ayaka's normal attack talent. Ayaka deals standard physical damage, but once she gains cryo infusion when she comes out of her dash, all of them will be converted into cryo damage. Ayaka's normal attacks are kinda whatever, but her charge attack is pretty interesting. It hits 3 times per charge attack, and has a very high vertical hitbox, which allows her to hit things in something like Venti's Tornado. Similarly, enemies who are clumped up together with some crowd control can also generally be hit all at once. However, the actual distance of her charge attack's hitbox isn't that good, which can cause her to miss even when the animation looks like it should hit. Overall, this talent should still be leveled as it is her second highest source of damage, but its overall value is not super high, as while the damage is non-negligible, it's also not very good unless you give Ayaka a ton of buffs. Ayaka's elemental skill is not anything special. She will deal one instance of AoE cryo damage that can also launch small enemies into the air. While its damage multiplier is decent, it has a fairly long cooldown at 10 seconds. There is no hold version of this skill, it applies 2 units of cryo, and generates anywhere from 4 to 5 cryo particles when it hits an enemy. You should still level this talent, but it is the lowest priority of the three. Ayaka's elemental burst is the biggest part of a kit, and one of the strongest bursts in the game, so we'll go over it in detail. When cast, Ayaka will unleash an icy whirlwind, which does repeating cryo slashes in a small AoE. This will do a total of 19 main slashes before ending with one final bloom. This whirlwind will fully end once it has been on the field for 5 seconds. On cast, Ayaka will unleash her burst in the direction of her closest enemy. Once the whirlwind starts damaging an enemy, it will remain in the same position until there are no enemies left 
after which it will proceed to continue moving in the direction it was cast. At Talon level 10, this burst has a total of a 4141% damage multiplier at Constellation 0, making it one of the largest amounts of damage that can be unleashed within such a short amount of time in the game out of any character. However, this burst does have a few caveats despite its damage. Because Ayaka's auto-targeting is not very good, along with the burst itself not having the biggest AoE, it is best utilized when enemies are grouped up together in a small clump to take the most advantage of. However, there are a lot of cases where big enemies can just straight up ignore her burst and move out of her AoE, which would basically mean you've effectively wasted your burst. Another thing to keep note of, Ayaka snapshots any buffs to her burst at the end of the casting animation. This is important to remember as it means you should set up any party buffs prior to using Ayaka, as well as her being able to take advantage of something like the Misplitter's third stack, which only applies after you cast her burst. This burst has standard ICD for her cryo ticks, costs 80 energy, and has a 20 second cooldown. Finally, I want to mention Ayaka's passive talents. Her A1 increases her normal and charge attacks after using her E. Overall, this passive is a nice bonus, but isn't super useful. Her A4 is the most important one though. If you apply cryo onto an enemy with her dash, she will gain an 18% cryo damage bonus. Because Ayaka's burst snapshots her stats, I highly recommend using her dash to apply cryo on the enemy right before you cast it. It's a good habit to develop, or you will basically just be throwing this extra damage away. Ayaka's weapon selection is actually quite good, and we'll go all of the recommended ones in order of star rarity. Unquestionably, Ayaka's best in slot, the Misplitter Reforged increases Ayaka's damage on all fronts, allowing her to gain all three stacks of the Misplitter very easily, has the highest base attack, and has crit damage as a substat. For those with the Misplitter, don't forget to do N1 while Ayaka has Cryo Infusion before casting her burst, as this is one of the requirements to gain the first stack of the Misplitter. The other two stacks will automatically be gained upon her casting her burst. With max stacks, Ayaka basically has an additional 40% cryo damage, which is pretty massive. This is, in my opinion, the best 5-star weapon in the game, and its current banner is one of the best ones to pull on. Harange Bakufutsu. While it loses to Misplitter by a fair amount, it's still Ayaka's second best option as it has 12% elemental damage bonus as well as increases her normal attack damage, which while not making up a majority of her damage, is still a modest boost to her DPS. Do note that you will have to avoid a lot of crit rate substats from artifacts. Primordial Jade Cutter. This is unsurprisingly also a good option for Ayaka. It boasts a ton of attack, though due to its massive crit rate substat, this weapon does favor a different build path than normal. With this weapon, running 4-piece Blizzard Strayer isn't as advised as any crit rate substat will immediately result in her overcapping her crit. This is still a very strong option though, and highly recommended. Lastly for the 5-star weapons, if you play with a shielder like Diona, Layla, or Zhongli, Summit Shaper actually isn't a bad option. Ayaka doesn't really mind building or maintaining stacks, though it does mean that you will have to delay your burst in the first rotation to build some stacks first. Because Ayaka isn't really played with many attack buffers, this weapon's mountain of attack percent does retain its value. But if you play with Shen He or don't use a shielder, the value of this weapon falls off greatly. Moving on to the 4-star options, Amenoma Kageuchi unquestionably Ayaka's best 4-star option, and this weapon alone can fix a ton of energy problems that Ayaka might have. At Refinement 5 and with max seeds, this weapon will refund a flat 36 energy after Ayaka uses her burst, effectively turning her 80 burst cost into a 44 energy cost burst. This weapon dramatically reduces her energy recharge requirements, though I will say that this weapon does have less value in the very first rotation of an Abyss Chamber. This is because you're highly unlikely to be able to get 3 seeds before your first burst, as that effectively wastes your first 30 seconds of the run. Still, as an overworld weapon and for subsequent rotations, this weapon is incredibly strong. Once you have this weapon unlocked, you no longer have to consider any other 4-star option. I also strongly recommend refining this weapon to Refinement 5 if you have the prototypes to spare. However, for those who have yet to unlock Amenoma Kageuchi, Blackcliff Longsword is her next best alternative. But its passive is kind of useless as it's not really easy to get kill stacks, especially for opening rotations or against bosses. I really only recommend using this weapon temporarily and dropping it once you have unlocked the Amenoma Kageuchi. And finally, uh, I actually don't have one here, but for those who do not wish to waste Star Glitter on the Black Cliff Longsword, the Harbinger of Dawn, Refinement 5, is still a fantastic option. The passive will be useless if you don't play with a shielder or a highly consistent healer, but this weapon cannot go wrong as a placeholder, at least until you unlock the Arminoma. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
Ayaka is an attack scaling DPS, which means she follows very bog standard build paths. However, her stats will vary a lot depending on whether you are using 4 piece Blizzard Straya or not. Regardless of your set, your main stats should always be the same, with her running an attack percent sands, cryo damage goblet, and a crit circlet. For those who specifically play with Kazaha or have Misplitter, an attack percent goblet is also very viable, though a cryo goblet will still usually perform better, assuming equal stats. Also, for those highly invested Blizzard Straya Ayakas, if you feel like you have started to overcap on your crit damage, an attack percent circlet might actually perform better than crit damage one. But, and this is a big but, you will need very good substats for this to even be viable. I would say if you cannot hit a 40 to 30 crit ratio with an attack circlet, this will probably not be worth it. For those running 4 piece Blizzard Straya, you should target around 40%, but not exceeding 45% crit rate and over 200% crit damage, assuming you are not using a crit weapon. If you run literally any other set other than 4P's Blizzard Straya, which in general should only be for Primordial Jade Cutter users, you should have ideally over 70% crit rate and easily over 200% crit damage. If you don't have the Primordial Jade Cutter, I would not recommend going the non 4 piece Blizzard Straya route. Also, who the f- Finally, let's talk energy recharge. Because Ayaka's burst has a high cost, along with her skill having a long cooldown, she does require a decent amount of energy recharge if you want to burst often. If you run another cryo character of a Vonius user, this amount will be alleviated slightly. As a general rule of thumb, I recommend at least 130-140% to 140 energy recharge to be on the safe side. This will also be easier if you run something like a Ziphos Moonlight Kazuha or using an Amenoma Kageuchi. The Amenoma is especially strong as it refunds Ayaka a ton of energy back, especially when it is highly refined. For artifact set recommendations, Ayaka's set choices are very straightforward. As alluded to previously, 4-piece Blizzard Straya is Ayaka's general best artifact set. This set offers a ton of free crit rate, which incentivizes you to build many other stats that are meaningful to Ayaka, such as energy recharge, crit damage, and attack percent. In a way, you can think of this set as a means to offset Ayaka's crit value requirements, as she benefits greatly from many other substats as well. With 45% crit rate against a frozen opponent, as well as cryo resonance active, you will have 100% effective crit rate, which is why most people often say that the cap for this set is 45% crit rate. This set does fall off greatly against boss type enemies, however, this is still a fantastic general all round set, even in those scenarios. Aside from 4 piece Blizzard though, I don't really recommend anything else. However, if you specifically use the Primordial Jade Cutter on Ayaka, a lot of your crit will be alleviated from this weapon. Additionally, any crit rate substat you get will result in you overcapping your crit. As such, for those Primordial Jade Cutter gamers, using a combination of 2 piece Blizzard as well as 2 piece Noblesse Oblige or any attack plus 18% might actually end up being a more viable option, assuming you have good substats. However, like I mentioned previously, your stat requirements, at least crit wise, will be vastly different from using 4 piece Blizzard. Ayaka, unlike a lot of the previous characters I've made guides for, is a little bit picky with her teammates. She isn't super flexible with her playstyle, which also makes teammate options a bit more limited. Being a freeze-focused character, Ayaka isn't exactly the most free-to-play friendly character in terms of team comps. She ideally needs an AoE Hydro Applicator, usually either Mona or Kokomi. Kokomi is really good in this role, as she can fill in both the Hydro Applicator role as well as the Healer role. Because Ayaka's burst works best when hitting as many enemies at once, she does require a character who can effectively crowd control them. Most notably, Notably, both Venti or Kazaha can fill this slot. Kazaha will be better in general as he can drag larger enemies in while boosting Ayaka's damage even more, while Venti might be better in situations where all the enemies can be dragged in by his tornado. The final slot can be quite flexible. You can go with a healer or shielder if you're not using Kokomi, and cryo ones like Diona or Layla will fill this role really well, as they also offer cryo resonance. Other elements will work just fine though, such as with Zhongli. Shenhe would be Ayaka's best partner here, and this team is generally considered Ayaka's best team. Ganyu can also be used as a sub DPS to fill in on Ayaka's downtime while providing cryo resonance. If you don't have Shenhe or Ganyu, Rosaria is also a great alternative as she gives cryo resonance, crit rate, as well as doing fairly decent damage on her own. Now, I've seen a ton of people use Ayaka as a punching bag to advocate against C6 Bennett. The truth is, 
Bennett should not even be used with Ayaka unless you are specifically setting up for a nuke showcase. So really, those people who are saying that C6 Bennett ruins Ayaka are just really stupid. Using Bennett in general would often mess up freeze rotations and can even cause issues with certain infusion priorities when used with someone like Kazuha or Venti. As such, Bennett is not recommended for general Ayaka comps. Against boss type enemies, the value of a Hydro character as well as Freeze in general falls off greatly. In those scenarios, you no longer have to care about playstyle team synergy and focus instead on loading Ayaka up with as much damage as possible. Using a team like Shenhe, Kazuha and a flex slot will be more optimal in these scenarios. Monocryo teams also become much stronger when used against bosses. In general, Ayaka is quite an expensive character to play. Her best teammates are pretty much all 5 stars, and her other 4 star counterparts aren't usually very good alternatives. She really needs either Mona or Kokomi, and Kazuha or Venti to work effectively. Alternatives like Sing Cho or Sucrose can work, but it just makes the overall quality of life gameplay very difficult. If you don't have Ayaka and are considering pulling her, do take her teammates into consideration. <laughs> Ayaka is one of the strongest characters at C0, and so IMO her constellations are very far from necessary. That said, we can still go over them in detail. Do note that I obviously do not have any footage of my own, as my Ayaka is constellation 0. Constellation 1. This decreases her E cooldown slightly, while on paper this seems very good, it actually isn't really super impactful to her overall gameplay or energy requirements. So overall, I consider this constellation fairly useless. Constellation 2. This gives her two additional small whirlwinds in her burst that deal 20% of the damage of the regular whirlwind. In terms of overall DPS, it's actually quite a fairly large increase. But the main issue is that these small circles spread out quite far on the side, so it only really works on big enemies. Like, mainly boss type enemies, so this constellation's value will vary depending on the kind of enemies you face, but it is still a pretty good stopping point for low spenders. Constellation 3 and 5 increase her burst and skill talents respectively. C3 is pretty good as more talent levels to her burst is very welcome. Constellation 4 probably Ayaka's best constellation. This reduces the defense of enemies hit by her burst, and considering defense shred is pretty hard to come by, this constellation will increase hers as well as her teammates' damage outputs greatly. This will also make her an excellent whale support for pyro nukes, such as with Diluc or Hu Tao. Constellation 6. This gives Ayaka one massive charge attack every 10 seconds. This constellation isn't really super valuable, Though, if you have this constellation, you are likely to have C6 Shen He as well, where this constellation gains much more value. Overall, this is a whale constellation, fairly nice to have, but not really anything special. So, Ayaka's best constellations lay somewhere in the middle. Her C2, C3, and C4 are all quite good, but the rest aren't super valuable. But like I mentioned previously, you absolutely do not have to pull any constellations, as Ayaka is already a monster DPS at C0. Finally, onto the Abyss Showcase. I will be using my free-to-play Ayaka on the bottom half of Abyss 12 alongside Kazuha, Mona, and Zhongli. Let's <laughs> go. 
Thank you everyone for watching this Ayaka guide. I hope this was useful, and I wish everyone the best of luck building Ayaka. May Ayaka want us, be Ayaka have us. Do also check out twitch.tv slash dukc, where I often stream Genshin Impact. Thanks once again for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Take care.